that says that the bonding process followed for the production of high loft non woven is needle punching hydro entanglement calendar bonding and uh, throw put, throw air bonding so uh, uh, this is the direct question that uh, if you have read about the bonding process that is used for production of these types of a specific non woven it is uh, throw put air, throw air bonding what actually it is it is a process in which uh, the air is forced through a web of fibers web of fibers and then they are particularly bind uh, together how this actually happens is if i talk about then the fibers are first laid down onto a loose web and then they are uh, then then hot air is blown through the web uh, which melts some of the fibers and bonds them together to create a lofty uh, soft and highly insulation non woven material and uh, this is done by uh, through air bonding process so in this particular case this is Uh, actually the mechanism how these things are uh, bond together so this is hell this is made with the help of the web and uh, when the fibers melts and then the bond finally at the end uh, these are bind together so option d is the correct answer through air bonding which says that uh, a drum driven winder is fitted with a three diamond drum the number of revolutions of the drum for a single traverse is 1.5 3 6 and 9 so uh, this is a uh, this is a fabric uh, manufacturing question uh, if uh, i talk about this is fm question this is a question of winding this is also a direct question one mark question this is uh, actually a conceptual question if uh, you have read about the winding process in detail then uh, for a single traverse what happens in case of single traverse the number of revolutions number of revolutions of the drum is directly proportional to the number of the drums that is used so uh, number of drums that are used since it is says that three diamond drum number of drums so if i talk about number of drums that are used are three diamond drums so in this particular case if uh, i say that uh, it is a three diamond drum so the uh, number of revolutions that would be made would also be three so this is also a direct question that has uh, asked in uh, gate tf 2023 now coming to the next question it says that among us the following weft uh, knitted structures double jersey structures is uh, or are options that are given as rib interlock single cross tuck and eight lock tuck tuck eight lock so uh, for these you need to know this is a typically two mark of question that says that uh, what are double jersey structures so in this double jersey structures if you have read about the knitting process in detail then you know that what is double jersey and what are the single jersey in case of double jersey the structures are rib structure interlock and eight lock these are uh, double jersey structures so rib is uh, how this rib structure is formed rib structure is formed by alternating knit and purl stitches in a single course whereas in case of interlock it is formed by interlocking of two sets of stitches that are knitted in the same course what are these course and wheels uh, if you have read about as warp and weft in case of knitting these are courses and wheels so uh, and whereas eight lock structures that is also a uh, double phase interlock uh, that is uh, formed by interlocking of two set of stitches and these are further knitted in a opposite uh, courses that creates a double phased fabric so uh, this is uh, uh, also a type of a double jersey structure and if we talk further about the single course uh, tuck then uh, last option option c it is a uh, typically a variation that is a, a type of a single jersey structure so 
these uh, option A, B and uh, D are double jersey structures in case of weft netted structure. So option A, B, D is the correct option. I think it is clear. This is also a two mark question. It says that a plain woven fabric with 20 ends per centimeter and 30 ends per centimeter prepared with 30 tex warp yarns and 25 tex weft yarns neglecting the yarn cream the aerial density in gram per centimeter square of the fabric is this is a fabric manufacturing question here we need to find the gsm gram per square meter so if you know about the fabric aerial density it is basically the warp aerial density plus weft aerial density so if uh, we will calculate this then for w1 it is it is saying that means for warp it is saying that epcm ends per centimeter is 20 and tex is what 30 so how we will calculate this uh, w1 means weight in gram per meter square you will calculate 20 ends per centimeter it is given as and uh, the tex is given a tex is basically gram per thousand meter 30 upon 30 gram per 1000 meter so this per centimeter into um, meter if we have to calculate this into 100 into 30 upon 1000 gram per meter the zero zero cancelled this comes out to be 60 gram per meter square similarly if we will have to do for this if we, we need to calculate this uh, then we can say that for uh, for next uh, w2 calculation then how we will do the w2 means w2 calculation can be done by we can solve this w2 in gram per meter square is basically 30 picks per centimeter into 25 gram per thousand meter so uh, it is w2 these uh, values are given so how we will calculate 30 upon uh, meter if we will convert per centimeter into per meter it is 100 into 25 gram per thousand meter so if you will calculate this then the answer will come out to be 75 gram per meter square w2 and the fabric aerial density fabric aerial density if i talk about this is w1 plus w2 that is 60 plus 75 gram per meter square it is 135 gram per meter square this is the final answer that we need to calculate so 135 is the answer in integer we need to write uh, it down then we can say that it is 135 so this is the final answer so coming to the next question that says that Consider the following statements regarding nylon 6 production. So this question is based out of nylon 6. Nylon 6 is made up of caprolactam and uh, using water as a catalyst. So there are uh, four statements given and you have to identify which is the correct statement. First statement says that the first uh, reaction involving a ring, ring chain opening of caprolactam with water is an endothermic reaction. Second statement says that increase in water concentration during the polycondensation results in higher molecular weight with polymer. Third is the polycondensation is an irreversible reaction. And the fourth statement says that increase in temperature during the polycondensation results in 
लोअर मॉलिकुलर वेट पॉलीमर सो यू हैव टू आइडेंटिफाई विच इज द करेक्ट स्टेटमेंट और स्टेटमेंट्स सो वेन आई टॉक अबाउट नाइलॉन सिक्स और नाइलॉन सिक्स सिक्स सो दीज आर टू डिफरेंट पॉलीमर्स नाइलॉन सिक्स इज मेड अप ऑफ कैप्रोल एक्टम एंड इज मेड फ्रॉम रिंग ओपनिंग पॉलीमराइजेशन प्रोसेस एंड वेयर एज नाइलॉन सिक्स सिक्स इज मेड अप ऑफ पॉली कंडेंसेशन पॉलीमराइजेशन रिएक्शन एंड द मेल्टिंग पॉइंट इफ आई टॉक अबाउट इज टू फिफ्टी फाइव डिग्री से टू सिक्सटी फाइव डिग्री सेल्सियस अराउंड वेयर एज दैट ऑफ कैप नाइलॉन सिक्स इज टू हंड्रेड फिफ्टीन टू टू हंड्रेड ट्वेंटी डिग्री सेल्सियस सो इफ यू नो द रिंग ओपनिंग रिएक्शन ऑफ कैप्रोलैक्टम विद वॉटर रिक्वायर्स द इनपुट ऑफ एनर्जी सो इट इज कंसिडर्ड टू बी अ इंडोथर्मिक रिएक्शन वेयर एज इफ आई टॉक अबाउट दिस पॉली कंडेंसेशन प्रोसेस इट इज अ रिवर्सिबल प्रोसेस सो दिस इज अ रॉन्ग इट इज नॉट अ इर रिवर्सिबल प्रोसेस इट इज अ रिवर्सिबल प्रोसेस and it requires the input of energy so it is an endothermic uh, reaction so endothermic reaction this is uh, right and uh, if it is a reversible reaction then we say we can say that in which uh, increasing the temperature leads to lowering of the molecular uh, weight due to the breakage of chain so uh, uh, molecular weight is reduced because due to the chain uh, breakage phenomena that happens uh, in the nylon 6 production so if i talk about this uh, higher molecular weight polymer so the molecular weight is reduced so lower molecular weight it is the right answer option p and s is the right answer so the correct option is option number d i think it is very much clear it is of yarn manufacturing and it says that uh, determine the correctness or otherwise of the following assertion and reason in boiling water polyester poy poy means partially oriented yarn partially oriented yarn shows higher shrinkage than polyester fdy fdy means fully drawn yarn and the reason says that molecular chain orientation is higher in polyester fdy than in polyester poy so you have to find which is right which is wrong if i talk about this uh, then both the statements are right but uh, the reason that is given as uh, is not the correct answer for uh, the assertion so assertion and reason both are right the reason for this is the higher shrinkage of uh, poy as compared to fdy the poy shrinkage is greater than fdy shrinkage why it is uh, due to the fact uh, that poy being partially oriented has some degree of molecular orientation whereas in case of fdy it has higher degree of molecular orientation fdy it is fully drawn so the orientation is comparatively high so this difference in molecular orientation affects the behavior of the yarns when they are exposed to the boiling water so uh, uh when these phenomena occurs then uh, uh, poy shrinks more because fdy is already fully oriented but it is not fully oriented so uh, when they are put in boiling water then uh, shrinkage happens in poy poy is because the orientation is not that much as compared to fdy so uh, they shrink comparatively more uh so i think this uh, is clear to you because the more the orientation the more the crystallinity it is difficult to break uh, the chains and it is difficult uh, for shrinkage to occur uh, because higher the orientation uh, lesser the shrinkage i think it is clear to you it is a fabric manufacturing question it says that consider the following reasons of shuttle loom stoppage breakage of warp yarns entrapment of the shuttle inside the shed flying of shuttle out of the shed slackening of the warp yarn so these are the different reasons that are given during the manufacturing process shuttle when shuttle goes from one end to the other end uh so uh, what are the possible outcomes or what are the possible reasons when a shuttle can stop it 
may be due to the package uh, of yarns it may be due to other mechanical or chemical processes uh, during the uh, machine or uh, if i say uh, something in shed uh, the shed occurs if uh, shed breaks or the yarn breaks then the machine uh, can be uh, stopped if i talk about loom loom is a very important chapter as far as gate is concerned so in this loom you have to uh, the reasons mostly gate ask about the possible or uh, reasons not about the shuttles type of the shuttles but they ask a uh, uh, bit conceptual question as far as uh, the things are concerned possible reasons means conceptual questions um, gate basically asked in the recent years possible reasons possible outcomes what are the possible uh, phenomena that occurs and uh, chemical process uh, during a chemical reaction or something like that in a similar term so these are the, the types of the questions uh, that generally occurs during this uh, uh, all gate examination preparation so if i, I talk about uh, coming directly to the question so uh, if i talk about this uh, breakage of warp yarns so uh, if i say when shuttle entraps inside the shed then loom stops so uh, if suppose shuttle shuttle is entrapped inside this so when it is entrapped then it cannot move forward or backward then the loom will automatically be stopped in the automatic stop loom so this is uh, the right answer in during the breakage of the warp yarns it uh, since they are automatically they are automatically fed and automatically rectified in uh, majority of the cases and uh, other bar protection uh, motion is there when which takes uh, into action when we warp yarn breaks or the shuttle entraps inside the shed or the shuttle flies out of the shed so uh, this is the possible outcome so also the flying of the shuttle outside of this shed so the loom will be stopped or in other cases for this protection warp stop motion is already there in the uh, loom machine which takes care of all these things so only in these two statements the loom shuttle can be stopped so option number b is the right uh, answer q and r now coming to the next question it says that in warp knitting the lapping movement having only under lap is close lap open lap laying in and miss lapping so in case of warp knitting laying in is the lapping movement in which the warp ends are laid in between the old ones that is used basically uh, for the purpose of creating some open or transparent fabrics so it is a direct question uh, you can say that option c laying is in is the correct answer for this question so uh, during this underlap movement uh, this laying in happens and uh, it occurs during the warp knitting process only for these types of question in case of knitting you just uh, have to remember some types of numericals that are basically already asked uh, in gate examination course what are course what are veils and uh, uh, different types of the knitting processes uh, as far as the uh, knitting uh, in fabric manufacturing is concerned and what are the possible phenomena uh, that occurs in the knitting process course veils and in case of non wovens there are two three varieties of the questions that are generally asked in the gate examination so i think it is also clear uh, this question the this is the fabric manufacturing question it says that the force exerted by the reed on the cloth fell at the instant of the beat up weaving resistance depends on so these are the four factors that are given free length of the warp yarn elastic modulus of the loom state fabric elastic modulus of the warp yarn and elastic modulus of the weft yarn so basically there are two things warp yarn and weft yarn and their modulus warp and weft yarns and their modulus if i talk about this so uh, when you know that the free length of the warp yarn directly affects the tension and uh, the interlacement free length directly affects the uh, tension tension between the uh, yarns 
and the interlacement between the warp and the drift ions and uh, due to this state it directly affects the weaving resistance weaving resistance means uh, uh, the difficulty caused in the uh, for uh, to resist the weaving means fabric manufacturing process the elastic modulus of the loom state fabric in the warp ion it determines the stiffness and the ability to resist the deformation under the applied load during the uh, process of the heat up and uh, it directly affects the weaving uh, resistance process so uh, if i talk about the warp yarn uh, is basically all the responsible for all these things so uh, the free length of the warp yarn it affects and uh, elastic modulus is affected and the elastic modulus of the loom state fabric but the elastic drift yarn does not participate in this uh, weaving resistance uh, process as uh, it is uh, defected because uh, the warp yarn only determines the stiffness uh, and the uh, ability to the resist the deformation in the applied load during the beat up process and the rift yarn does not take part in this process so uh, basically this is important i think uh, option number a option number b and option number c is the correct option i think this is clear it says that uh, in a roving frame the ratio of a diameter of a top driven cone drum uh, to the diameter of the bottom driven cone drum is inversely proportional to the bobbin diameter at the instant top cone diameter is given bottom cone diameter is given and uh, bobbin diameter is given when the bobbin diameter increase to 100 mm the ratio of the top cone diameter to the bottom cone diameter uh, in up to two decimal places this is also a numerical type of question according to this question what basically that they gave is the the diameter is inverse that the diameter of the top driven cone is uh, inversely proportion uh, to the diameter is inversely proportional to the bobbin diameter so uh, what is basically suppose uh, the bobbin diameter is d1 and d2 and top cone diameter is uh, top cone diameter is t1 suppose so they say that t is direct inversely proportional to d it is said that so t1 upon t2 t1 by t2 is equal to d2 by d1 this is given in the question so if i calculate t2 here, we have to calculate top driven ratio top driven diameter to the bottom driven diameter so this uh, we have to calculate so let us calculate this value so as per the question if i see the ratio of the first of the first one this is of first one uh, diameter and this is of second one this is of second one this we have to calculate suppose this is said to be at uh, x or y as per your uh, need so it will come out to be diameter of the second is given as second at uh, diameter of the uh, second is given as uh, 100 and uh, this uh, 100 and uh, the diameter earlier diameter was 54 so you can calculate this 100 upon 54 and uh, here what is given as we should need to calculate uh, this one value also so uh, this is what is given as t1 by t2 ka ratio so t1 by t2 ratio is uh, 1.96 when how we will get uh, t1 by t2 ratio uh, the ratio of the top driven uh, is this one and t2 is this one so when you will calculate this then you will get out to be Two one two one two by one zero eight. It will come out to be one point nine six. So uh, this is one point nine six upon x is equal to hundred upon fifty four. When you will calculate this, then you will get this value to be one point zero six. So this is the final answer, one point zero six. This is the correct answer. Up to two decimal place, it is asked. Then you will have to calculate this uh, in the two decimal place only. I think it is clear. 
This question says that a circular knitting machine of 26 inch diameter and 20 gauge with 120 feeders is running at 30 rpm to produce a plain knitted fabric by using 30 tex yarn. If the loop length is 3 mm, then the rate of production in kg per hour of the machine, rounded off to one decimal place, is. So here you will have to calculate uh, this uh, rate of production. So how will uh, rate of production be calculated in knitting? So the solution takes place as diameter is given as 26 inch. So D is 26 inch that is given already, and gauge is 20. So first you will have to calculate the number of wheels, then thereafter the number of cores, uh, cores, then you will calculate the number of loops. And uh, you know that the formula of number of loops is number of wheels into number of cores. So uh, when you will calculate the number of wheels and number of cores, then you will get the number of loops. And uh, uh, you will need to find the loop length. And uh, how this loop length is calculated by finding out the number of loops into uh, loop length of a single uh, knitted yarn. And uh, then uh, if you have calculated the loop length, then you can directly calculate the uh, mass of the yarn and the production kg, um, per kg. Uh, directly so uh, doing a step by step so number of wheels is pi dg you know the formula pi dg so it is pi into 26 into 20 number of wheels don't multiply this number of cores you will calculate number of cores is pi into twist uh, into uh, number of feeders so uh, this uh, pi into uh, what is given as uh, uh, how much time is given it is a uh, uh, per hour means uh, pi into time uh, number of courses time is 60 minutes or 1 hour so 60 into uh, number of feeders Number of feeders are one twenty. This uh, you will calculate. So this will come out to be uh, whatever the value this will come out to be. So this number of since suppose uh, W N and W C it is represented by. You. So if you will calculate this W C and W M, then if I talk about uh, this part. Uh, this section, then you can say that uh, number of loops is pi into twenty six into twenty into thirty into sixty into one twenty. Then you will calculate this value, and now the loop length can be calculated. Loop length. Is number of number of loops into number of uh, number of loops into loop length of a single the loop length of single knitted fiber. So uh, if I talk about this, then the loop length will come out to be. Pi into twenty six into twenty into thirty into sixty into one twenty. You will calculate uh, this into loop length of a single knitted thing is given as a three three mm. So three mm will be divided into meter. So three by thousand meter. And uh, then the mass, uh, mass. Uh, if you have to calculate, then uh, the mass will how be calculated? Then mass will be calculated by uh, multiplying the same value by the tex kg per hour. Kg per hour will be tex is how much? Tex is given as 30 tex. Yeah, and 30 tex means 30 gram. Per thousand meter. So uh, this is uh, basically if you will multiply by tex, so thirty gram per thousand meter. So meter to meter will get cancelled, and gram to kilogram uh, you can convert this value. 
if you will convert this value into kilogram then you will get the answer if you will solve everything using the gate calculator then the answer will come out to be 31.8 kg since you have to calculate in the it in one decimal place then the answer uh, for this is uh, 31.8 kg and now the next question it says that uh, a square jammed plain cotton woven fabric is produced from 10 uh, any yarn it is an indirect count yarn of circular cross section assuming the density of the yarn as uh, 0.91 gram per centimeter cube the number of threads per inch in the fabric rounded off to the nearest integer is so uh, you will have to for a square jammed fabric you know for a square jammed fabric first you will have to calculate the diameter of the fabric then uh, using the diameter uh, the number of the threads can easily be calculated since, uh, since in a square jammed fabric both the uh, diameter warp diameter as well as web diameter is same so it is of uh, 10 any uh, 10 any uh, yarn count is given it is an indirect count since uh, you know the diameter for an indirect count is 0 0.990 into specific volume of yarn upon the root specific volume of yarn upon 840 into any this is how it is calculated then diameter is 0 0.990 into specific volume is basically 1 upon root of density so 1 upon rho y of yarn rho of yarn into 840 into any so when you will calculate any is given as 10 then you will calculate this then it will come out to be 0 0.0113 inch you just uh, do from your end this is the diameter value that you will get so uh, now what we will have to do further after calculating the diameter since basically for a square jam fa fabric just everything is same means the fabric diameter is basically the warp diameter plus web diameter d plus z to d and for anything you have to calculate uh, then you you have to calculate uh, this thing you have to calculate the number of threads per inch so how threads will be calculated threads per inch basically is n you have to calculate it so for n you just know the formula first uh, since d is uh, 0 0.0113 uh, h is equal to d so ca capital d means fabric diameter is, uh, is warp diameter plus is, um, uh, web diameter it is 2d if you will calculate this then it will come out to be 0 0.0226 uh, inch and also you know that uh, um, uh, using uh, this uh, for this cos theta 1 plus cos theta 2 is equal to 1 since uh, everything in uh, case of a square jammed fabric is same so cos theta 1 and cos theta 2 both are same then it will come out to be 2 cos theta is equal to 1 cos theta is equal to um, 1 by 2 and the theta is basically pi by 3 in this case and uh, for a square jammed fabric t is uh, d sin theta this is the formula you know and theta is pi by 360 degree angle so t is 0 0.0226 into cos theta sin 60 uh, sin 60 is root 3 by 2 then 0 0.019 57 you just calculate this p is uh, basically 1 by n so in this question you have to calculate uh, what you have to calculate the value of n n is what the number of threads per inch you have to calculate so uh, using this you can calculate this value p is uh, this so n is basically 1 upon p it is inversely threads per inch you have to calculate it is number of threads per inch so 1 upon 0 0.01957 then uh, it will directly come out to be 51.09 so n is n is directly come out to be 
फिफ्टी वन सो द आंसर इज फिफ्टी वन इज द करेक्ट आंसर आई थिंक दिस इज दिस टाइप ऑफ क्वेश्चन आर बिट लेंदी एज फार एज दिस गेट एग्जामिनेशन इज कंसर्न बट स्क्वायर जैम फैब्रिक क्वेश्चन कम्स एवरी ईयर सो यू विल हैव टू टेक दिस सीरियसली एंड टेक इन टू अकाउंट वेरी केयरफुली बिकॉज दिस इज अन ऑफ द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट टाइप ऑफ क्वेश्चन दैट कम्स इन द गेट एग्जामिनेशन सो 